I only inherited my chair on the days today. I unfortunately didn't have the schuss to do any of it, but I here to tell you a little bit what I know about my father, my father's involvement. So as Rabbi Fellow said that the radio started in as far as officially in Afata Sabayanis with Rabbi Weinberg's uh, Matzai Shabbos Tanya Shir. She Rebbe was very involved. But interesting enough, when my father passed away and we wrote in a whole long of list of things that my father did throughout his lifetime, there was two lines that we forgot to add. And the Rebbe made sure we added that. And, and that was the fact that the Rebbe said, Every, my father had twice week radio show on Friday and Sunday, and it wasn't officially a program of Hasidus as Rabbi Weinberg did. It was, general, it was more about generally talking about Yiddishkeit and raising money, as many Jewish organizations did at that time. But yet, the Rebbe saw those programs as every week, there was a Fatsamayanis. And that's very simple because when a Chassid talks, somehow or another, within the 15 minutes that my father spoke, and uh, my father used to be known that he spoke very quickly. Why was that? Because he managed to say what a normal person took 15 minutes on the radio, he did it in 10 minutes because every minute counted. He had to pay for it. So he had to make sure not to speak very quickly. So in his 15 minutes that he spoke, there was plenty of chassidus directly and indirectly given over. Every time there was a michlof kloli, my father read it on the radio, both in Yiddish and in English. Um, and then in Tavshin Lamid, Chaim Baruch started the hookups. A short while later, Chaim Baruch went into the Rebbe, and he told the Rebbe that he would like to um, put the radio Fabrengans on the radio. And he was asking the Rebbe permission. And the Rebbe told him, it's yes, is not the sight of them. It's a beautiful idea, it's a great thing, but now's not the time for it. A few months later, my father wrote into the Rebbe, they would like to put the Rebbe's from Rengen on the radio, and in between the Sikhs, he would give over a short equal, uh, English synopsis of what the Rebbe said, and the Rebbe gave him a bracha to do it. So Chaim Baruch explains it, that the Rebbe didn't want, it was a good idea, and the world was ready for it, but you're not the man to do it. But he didn't want to tell, tell Chaim Baruch that way. So he told him, it's a nice thing. And then when my father wrote in, he said, oh, the Rebbe knew your father's going to do it hand and feast, and he's going to do it right. So the Rebbe gave him that schos. The Rebbe used to give, uh, I don't know exactly what, how much money the Rebbe was mishtatif. It's very possible that half of the fabrengen was paid for by the Rebbe. I don't know the amount. Um, because there was a time that my father would receive several thousand dollars from the Rebbe, and it was for many Fabrengans. Like not every, every after Fabrengan would he give him the money for it. My father asked then if he could raise money for the Fabrengan, and the Rebbe told him no. The Rebbe said, if he wants, he can get sponsors. I don't know exact lotion, which he had. Every Fabrengan was sponsored by one or two or three, three Nadvim, uh, and he would announce it before and after. But the Rebbe did not want it to become like a, if you want to take away the cheshivas, which is very well understood, the Rebbe did not want that to be, but he did allow him to. And I guess because of that, the Rebbe felt a little bit sorry for my father, raising the money from him, so the Rebbe gave his share to the Fabrengen. Um, and it, again, it was sometimes, matter of fact, if the Tovshin Dalit, one of the secretaries called my brother and he told him 
we found an envelope. In it was money from the Rebbe that was meant to be given to your father for the Fabrengen. I think from Tavshin Lamed. So just imagine we had that money in the bank. How smooth is really made? I could bond him, but the money again ended up getting to the right <coughs> to the right place. So you're all familiar with the Rebbe. The Rebbe said that his drinking tea with the Rebbetson every day for five ten minutes was very important for him. So what did the Rebbetson and the Rebbe discuss? Anyone know? What they spoke for 10, 15 minutes, what they speak about? I don't know. I can tell you one conversation they had. So uh, after it, was, it was after one Fabrengen, a few days later, my father's standing outside 770. The Rebbe walks out of 770, and he turns to my father. He says, was macht My father looked at him. What's, what's the problem? Said mit ne gesagt as du es gehust das ach. The Rebbe told my father. The Rebbe that my father was giving over the translation between sikhs. He was coughing a lot, so she wanted to make sure my father was doing well. So when the Rebbe saw my father, he asked him how he's feeling. So we know one conversation with the Rebbe. I mean, I'm sure you, many of you heard other conversations, but this is one of the conversations about the Rebbe. So the point over here is that the Rebbe listened to the radio. She took interest in it, pleasure, and she reported back to the Rebbe, and I guess she spoke to him about the Fabrengen also, but also how Rabbi Hecht translated, and my father didn't only translate, um, but uh, he would give over, like, you know, if you ever listen to a ball game on the, on the radio, so... The announcer has to describe what's going on in the stadium or face other than the reporters. So that my father would try to, to create in the listeners, uh, in the, uh, the, uh, they should try to imagine what, seven, what was going on in 770, how 770 was packed from one side to the other, and how the Rebbe got up and danced and, and sang and made his hand, talking to someone. So many times in the middle of his translations, he... He felt it was more important to tell them what's going on, and that actually he said in Yiddish. When he spoke and told the people what's going on, he said he spoke in Yiddish. When he gave over what the Rebbe said, he said it in English. Because there was a big audience out there which they were embarrassed to come to the Rebbe's Fabrengen. They were worried they may be spotted by some of their students or whoever it was. So they only listened to the Rebbe on the radio. So for them, my father spoke in Yiddish, letting them know what, 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 uh, what was going on. So, um, bottom line is that the, the, uh, the means of radio uh, back in the early 70s and the 60s, maybe, was, some, was a, a major means of communication to the outside world to spread the teachings of the Torah Chassidus. And that was really came to its peak when actually the Rebbe's... Uh, Fabrengens were broadcasted on, on, on the radio. And it's known that there are many, many Shivas and others who would, would not come to the Rebbe's Fabrengens, but they listened to the Rebbe on the radio. So it was a major accomplishment in Afat Samayanas. And then afterwards, of course, we're soon going to hear from Rabbi Krinsky and others. Uh, but once we went to satellite, it took a whole new, uh, new level. Uh, bottom line is, maybe she should help that Kar of Mamish, we should be Zecha. To Torah Chadash, Miti Tetzi, we will finally hear the Rebbe, Torah from the Rebbe himself, not to listen to any, we don't have to listen to any tapes, television, uh, videos, or tapes. And we should be Zecha to uh, just one more point, actually. One more point, um, which not only when it came to radio as as Fat uh, Samayon, it's in the actual teaching. So when the Rebbe came out with Neshek, Mitzvah Neshek, the Rebbe was really working very very hard on on getting uh, people to do. You have to remember, all the Mosayim that the Rebbe came out with, it was primarily for the non-observant Jew. 
starting with Avish Yisrael, because by us in Chabad, there was no problem with Avish Yisrael. That was only for the outside world. But all, everything else was... Uh, so when it came to Mr. Tzula and Mezuzah even, it came to Nesek, yes, it was mainly for the, for the... But there was a big movement in the Fruma movement not to light candles, because it was uh, Naya Minig, and the Rebbe tried to explain to him it was old Minig, but there was a big resistance. And the Rebbe was trying, really had to break through in, in Neshek. So, at, I don't know exactly, I know, remember it was Erev Pesach, I think it was the night of Adikas Chametz. My father had a call that the Rebbe wants to see him. Came to 770, my father was there, Rabbi Weinberg was there, and Esther Sturmig was there. They, at that time, made little match, match, uh, matchbooks. Probably, uh, in pixels. <laughs> a matchbook with a little, not a match, they were, you'd pull them off, off the kind of cardboard, and the Rebbe, they made for Neshek to get people to light candles, and the Rebbe at that time, Gave my, he initialed his initial on one of the books, a little matchbook. He gave my father, he must have given Rabbi Weinberg, and the Sturmik, and what the Rebbe wanted, why he called my father and Rabbi Weinberg, because they were the two people which spoke on the radio, and the Rebbe wanted there should be a big Sturm for Nesri before Pesach that year. And then again, WEVD was a station which was listened by many, many, f that's what the, that's what played in every Jewish home on every Shabbos. You went into a Jewish home, WEVD was on. There was Jewish music on it, and there were Jewish, this rabbi, that rabbi, the other rabbi, they all spoke on Friday. So it was a big, it was a, it was, out of Yom, it was a big, people would listen to a lot. And the Rebbe wanted that it should really, very strong on, on an Eshek. And the, the Rebbe then turned to my father and told him, I don't remember the exact question, but is it you do, or by now already, you should be ready running the whole WEVD. You should be running the radio station. And therefore, make sure to get, spread the word, to, they should hack it and, until people start doing it. So again, we see that the means of radio at that point was, at the time was very, very important. It was the means to get the word to the outside world. And uh, Baruch Hashem, my father had a big part in, a big schus in being made with Sionis and getting out the word that the Rebbe wanted, same, whatever it may be, Nesek and others, to the outside world. So let's hope and pray that Bakar of Mamish, we should, the kids were Anu, the Rebbe should take us out of Golas, and uh, we'll hear new Chassidus, and then you don't need radio, you don't need satellite, you don't need, the Rebbe will speak and the whole world will hear.